Hello, everybody. hope you're doing well. Hope you guys all had great weekends. Welcome back to the weekend recap of CSGO News. I was actually gone all weekend out of town. If you guys can tell, it got pretty sunburned, so it was, it was a bad but a great weekend. So hope you guys are on today's episode of CSGO News. As always, well, guys, there's also a knife giveaway down below, a flip knife black laminate giveaway. The link is in the description. It's free to enter, but I hope you guys are on today's episode of CSGO News. The first and big story, and again, a lot of big stories happening today, but the first one, apparently Shroud returning to CSGO competitively, that being season 28 of ESCA Open. So not, of course, the extreme competitive competitiveness, but still competitive CSGO nonetheless. And even more shocking is his teammates, apparently also going to be former Cloud9 member Nothing, as well as, of course, Sean Gares. And also, two surprises, Flip Florin and Lurpus to join the team. They will be known going forward as the old guys in ESCA Season 28. So it's going to be really cool to see how they come back, how well they do. And I'm not really sure at this point in time who I'm most excited to see, but it's been pretty much 100% confirmed, guys, by Shroud himself on stream. The team will be coming back for ESCA Open. You missed my last demo, CSGO Summit. A lot of people want to watch me play Counter Strike again. I actually, um, you guys are probably going to be happy to hear this, but I'm actually I going to be, I'm actually going to be playing ESEA no, open not. matches. He's in the truck. And also, in pretty big news for all of you guys who are in the U.S. right now. If you guys do not know this, it's kind of confusing. A lot of people around the world do not know that esports and sports betting here in America is largely illegal, unless you're actually in Las Vegas. Of course, everything goes in Las Vegas, but it's been illegal for quite some time. And you, I, people like me, have to use like VPNs if you want to bet on esports and that kind of thing. But that may no longer be the case. Apparently, though, uh, the U.S. actually the Supreme Court had a meeting and they actually deemed it unconstitutional to ban esports and sports betting. So, of course, that does include online esports betting as well. And I keep on saying esports because that's what we're kind of here for. And this could be the return of many websites out there, like possibly CSGO Lounge. And we could see a small resurgence of CSGO skins in the future as well because, of course, CSGO skins, TF2 skins, there's all other skins out there as well. But the most popular one being CSGO skins for use, used in betting for all those other countries out there that use, you know, like Drake Wing or those weird uh, esports betting websites out there. So it could very soon be legal here in America in every single state, not just, of course, La Las Vegas, Nevada. So it's going to be cool to see if that actually does go through. And apparently, we could see a resurgence of CSGO skins. Of course, there's still the whole seven day trade ban thing. Which OP Skins actually did tweet about this past weekend. If you guys did not see this, OP Skins released an entire article which I'll link down below for all of you, which is kind of very particular because I'm not really sure which side to take. Of course, when you guys take the seven day trade ban, there's of course many benefits and of course uh, many, you know, many backdraws of the of the actual implication of it. The first of which being of course a 70% reduction in scammers inside CSGO. Of course, all those people out there, the main ones that are being stopped are the scammers out there who could scam people continuously throughout the day. They now have to wait seven days with those skins to actually scam with them again. Of course, there's still going to be scams no matter what you do in CSGO, but a 70% reduction in scam reports is obviously a huge thing. And of course, though, this gonna, uh, the, the drawbacks of this being uh, you're going to have a marketplace like OP Skins. Of course, they're going to complain about this. They're the number one place to go buy and sell your CSGO skins, and it's going to cost them business. But on the other hand, in this article itself, they did point out it's also costing Valve a lot of business as well. So it really makes you curious as to what Valve will do in the future. Will they lessen that trade ban? Of course, John McDonald came forward and said it's exceedingly unlikely they're going to revert that trade ban at all, which is pretty crazy to think about because when it comes to esports betting, CSGO gambling, whatever it might be, this of course hurts many websites out there, but also it may be hurting Valve. You guys already know the drop in player base. Uh, apparently from we've, for the first time since 2015, we've dropped below 400,000 daily users. Although people saying right now, of course, April's a short month on top of that because that was the last reported month on. Of course, many people out there going through finals exams. The summer's about to start. It's pretty much starting this week as well. So May is really the month you want to count on for player base. But on top of as well, we also see a big drop in, of course, player trades. And that, of course, is a Steam market, which also hurts Valve. A huge drop off in player trades. Apparently, according to OP Skins and their research numbers, guys, and of course, this is public information as well, so it's pretty much can be confirmed. It was pretty shocking to see. Apparently, before this trade ban, there were three to four million trades per day on the Steam market. Now, after it, just about 1.5 million. So, over a 50% reduction in CSGO trades or Steam market trades as well after this drop off. So, that's a huge impl implication of, of course, course, all those trades going through that have now been stopped, and that is, of course, a foreshadowing of the downfall of CSGO and other trading out there as well. As long as a seven-day trade ban does stay in place, the game is hurt. OP skins obviously hurt, but is Valve hurt the most out of anyone? And why? You have to ask yourself, why are they taking this hurt? Is it definitely worth it to them? Is it worth it to them to, of course, take that D flow of money and, of course, have less people be scammed? Or is that the reason they're doing it? I do expect sometime soon, though. We're going to have, of course, John McDonald has been responding to us on Twitter on the daily, which has been great to see. But I do think Valve is planning something special, and we're going to have to wait and see what exactly it is. The game is hurting right now, but do we believe in the future? At least now we're down to the core player base, the people who don't just like gambling, the people who don't just like you know the skins and the knives itself. We're here, the few, the proud, 
the players. And it's now official, guys. Envious has now dropped out of season 28 of Mountain Dew League. They, they actually can do so, though. People actually forget about the new rules. If you are relegated from EPL, which they were, if you guys remember last weekend, they were actually relegated after losing to Team AGO and, of course, to Team Windigo in a best of three, which probably shouldn't have happened. But either way, they were, of course, automatically relegated down to season 28 of Mountain Dew League. They've actually opted out of going into that season. Of course, this means a lot of big things. We also had Scream tweet out decisions coming soon for sure. So people taking kind of two routes of this, of course, them withdrawing from season 28 of Mountain Dew League could mean two things. First of all, it does mean, of course, internal team struggles, and of course, it could mean a team roster change coming soon for Envious. I'm sure a lot of you guys know about the French roster or the roster shuffle coming sometime soon with G2 and, of course, Envious being involved. Maybe LDLC, but most likely not. And, of course, that trio of Smith, Existence, and Shock's going to be heavily involved as well as they might sign with G2. So, of course, Envious is now withdrawn, guys. They will be invited back, though, for Season 29 of Mountain Dew League. Now, people questioning why. If you guys remember, though, it was, I believe, late 2016 early 2017 with Virtus Pro being relegated quite often a new rule was actually made by ESL themselves so apparently a team was actually relegated from EPL down to Mountain Dew League they can actually opt out of that first season and get an invite next to the next season as well so season 29 of Mountain Dew League expect MVS back guys but it will probably be a brand new MVS roster now very lastly for CSGO news as well we do have a complexity roster change of course they already had their their core five on screen for all of you but PTR has now been made a free agent and he of course can leave complexity as he wants to he has now been released by them of course Shazam joining them and taking his role as opera as well so PTR after nine months of complexity he is now off their starting roster and that is it for today's episode of Cisco News I hope you guys all enjoy feel free to leave a comment down below what your favorite story was thank you all for the great support of course if you guys were here on Sunday we did our first episode of skin worthy stories and I can't even read all the comments there were so many comments so many Twitter DMs I cannot wait for episode number two and thank you guys all for your concern I know a lot of you guys messaged me saying Jake you don't have a job Jake you don't make that much money off YouTube why are you giving away so much money at this point, I just I really have stopped caring about CSGO skins. So I'm just going to buy some CSGO skins, give them back to you guys. If you continue to like the series, and you guys continue to like the series, and that's how it works. So please, do not be concerned about me, guys. I have actually been interviewing with a couple esports companies, a couple of companies out there in general for a future job. I am confident I will find a job as well. And so for you two to be a side job, it's just been a dream of mine for a long time. And I will continue to put my money out there for you guys to, of course, win and earn yourselves. It's my way of giving back for all of you guys for giving me my last eight years on YouTube. So don't be worried about me, guys. Thank you all for the great response to my video so far. You guys are amazing. I will see you all hopefully sometime soon with more CSGO news and other episodes out there coming soon. As always, guys, I'm going to like you. I will see you all soon. Goodbye.